Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor back in the studio and back with my own personal project, the Burma Build. Yes, it has been cracking on. Now, I, without banging on it about it too much, those of you watching the channel will know I'm in heading up into Kickstarter phase. Based on that, I've, I've got a lot of stuff going on. So you're actually going to be probably seeing a bit more of the Burma Build because the Burma Build is one of those projects that I can dip in and it's an easy terrain project for me. So it's one of those things I'm going to be using to distract myself while I do the book. Now you do have other content coming out, but you'll probably be seeing a bit more of this than you used to. Hopefully one episode a month at least because I, you know, it's my go-to project and I'm enjoying it to be perfectly honest. Now, uh, as you look at the table, glorious table that it is, me and the lad have been playing our games, we've been getting back into bolt action, learning the second edition rules because we sort of drifted out just as second edition came in. We've had a dabble but we're just getting ourselves up to speed. He is a right six fairy and I am getting sick and tired of Japanese knee mortars. Yeah, the terrain makes you clump up in the jungle trails, which makes it especially lethal to template fire and stuff like that. Now, I don't know if that's something I need to adjust the terrain for, or whether I want to leave it as, as jungle warfare. You know what I mean? That is what it's like. You do clump up on the trails, and if you get hit, you get hit hard. Another element of the terrain that we've noticed is because of the line of sight blocking terrain, what you're getting is this situation where if you really want to have a good shot at someone, yeah, as they're making their way through, you have to step out into the open. And so you've got to be confident that you're going to be able to like apply enough pressure to that unit either through kills or through pins it's a bolt action mechanic but basically more hits you give them the more they get suppressed the less effective they are so if you can get out you don't actually actually have to do lots of damage to the unit just put lots of fire on them from a couple of different units and you can make them ineffective but there's a gamble there and what we've noticed is we're starting to rush for the sort of dense terrain pieces where you can get in and have a bit of cover but you can still shoot out. Spotters are becoming a problem as well for his artillery. But there's nothing I can do about that other than like charging them. <laughs> yeah, so we're enjoying it. Yeah, now I've reached that sort of point with the project where it's like, all right, I'm, you know, we've got a table's worth of terrain now quite easily. There's a couple of little bits down there, a couple of little scatter bits, and this table extends roughly about five foot at the minute. Yeah, we've got a foot at the spare for our models and watch cut books and stuff like that, but it can easily drag out to six foot. So I've got a six foot by four foot worth of good jungle terrain. So now what, okay? Well, uh, I was debating, yeah, making roads. And I'd started messing around with the colours and the design elements and that sort of stuff. And then a little bit in the back of me went, oh, hold up, Bow School, you've done this before. Yeah, you've gone charging in, yeah, with making lots and lots of pieces before you've really nailed down how you want it to look. And uh, very similar to these pieces where, with these pieces, these were the first designs. And then I came in later, yeah. And then I came in with the idea of coming in with that wash to dirty them down and blend the edges, which is far more realistic. So I've made that mistake before. And so I'm sitting, I was thinking, well, do you know what? It's probably better to do a few little areas of path to type terrain. Yeah, not specifically roads or anything like that, but well-trodden areas to work the colours and, and to get a feel for it. So what I thought was, yeah, I've got this, okay? Now, this is a Sarissa Precision Japanese village house. Okay, I picked it up when I was messing around with Test of Honor. I've got a few other bits, but they're very Japanese. Whereas this one, yeah, this could be a jungle hut anywhere. Now what I'm thinking is, I don't want to just put the kit together and whack it on the table. I'm going to put the kit together, I think, and then dress it, you know, give it a thatched roof, work on the walls and that sort of stuff, and have a play with it. It's a single building, so I can have a, it's very non-committal to the rest of the project, if you know what I mean. I can have a play with this, see how it goes. And so the idea is, yeah, uh, 
at a later stage, well, at the next vid probably, I'm going to tackle that, I'm going to put it together, dress it up, we'll give it a thatched roof, we'll do the sides, I want to mount it on a reasonable size base so I've got some earth in front of it that I can mess around with the colours, do a couple more scatter pieces. Uh, I've got a rice hut somewhere from them and that'll work well and I may have to, you know, knock some wood piles or something up, but let's make a small scatter set that I can drop in the terrain. One, this is gonna give me my ground colors and a little chance to play with those before I go on along and I make 12 foot of roads and paths. So that's a small idea. On top of that, it's gonna break the jungle up. Yeah, right now the jungle is just jungle. And I feel by being able to drop in even just a small settlement will change the dynamics of the play. It'll, it'll create a larger open area. Hopefully, I'm, I'm not sure, would you count a jungle hut as hard cover? Or with it being wood and everything, would it still be soft cover? But actioners, let me know in the comments, guys. I'm quite curious about that. Yeah, but that's the basic plan for putting the building together and creating a bit of scattering. So I can have a play with buildings, I can have a play with ground and get a feel for them before I go along and build my village, you know, my 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 Japanese camp. Because you've got to remember Burma, you've got the, you know, the Burma Railroad. Uh, next build stage will be adding a couple of buildings and a hut. I think that is going to make a massive difference. But before I get to that stage, I was thinking about that and... It was like, right, if I build a hut, what do I finish it to? Do I finish it to the muddy pieces or do I finish it to my earlier stage pieces? And it's like, all right, this is getting a bit silly. Yeah, I've got two stages of build on the go. Yeah, but the vet, I know I've, I've still got to go in and, and wash my plants and I know I want to swap out the foreground trees at some point. But I think the smartest thing right now is to go along and with all these pieces, yeah, go in, seal them up, yeah, because they're not sealed yet, and then brown the edges and match them to my more custom pieces. I think that's where I'm going to go with this. Now, on top of that, I've got a couple of little sort of foliaging jobs to do. Now, I created these corner pieces to sort of stick on the edges and the corners of your bill of the table to sort of give that impression that the table was flowing rather than just an island of scatter terrain. But the problem is when I did them, the vision wasn't there, okay? And I've got quite a large grass verge here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along and I'm gonna rip these bits off, yeah? Move them further down, move the clump foliage down, bush it up in between and basically change the edges of these to match the edges of these so they're much tighter. So I think I've got one, two, three, three of those to do. Yeah, and that'll be the, that's gonna be the first job. And then, yeah, it'll be a matter of going in and sealing it all and then giving it all a wash. And hopefully that should bring it all together. Right, first job. I've got to move all this terrain off this table, move the battle map before I get paint and gubbins all over it, put the miniatures away. I've also got to spray paint Corbin's, what you call it, base coat, Corbin's models, because I need. I, I did it with an airbrush paint when we first did it. So I need to do that as well. Yeah, but clear the desk, get ready, get these flocked up. Once these are flocked up, then we can start tackling the ceiling, then we can tackle the washing, and we bring the entire board up to a standard. Yeah, once we've got that standard, then we can start adding more pieces on. Starting off with the, the watch got the buildings, we'll then drip, next task after that will be the tracks and the roads. And then, I don't know yet. I don't know, but we'll find out. Right, cracking on time. So I finished bulking out the foliage on these and extending it up, up into the lip to about a centimetre. And I've got to say, they've come out lovely. A lot better than I was expecting to be truthful. Yeah, a lot denser, especially like, what you call it, this uh, edge piece. Yeah, I need to make a few more of these, I think. And 
my sort of two corner pieces, yeah, which are modular. Okay, so they've come out really dense and a lot nicer. And also, that lip was sort of creating line of sight problems, bringing the foliage up to the up to the edge of the lip instead of having quite a clear spot sort of helps define where the line of sight is going down the path, so I'm quite chuffed. Although with the majority of them being edge pieces, it's not a major factor because it's line of sight on the edges, but I do need to make some more edges up. Now, the next job I've got to do on these is I've got to seal them up with a bit of watered down PVA. Uh, I've already got it mixed up. I need to give it a stir, get it in a syringe and start squirting it on. Yeah, uh, before I do, what I do want to do is just go along and as you can see, it's sort you can see like a line of foliage if you look yeah do you see the shadow under the clump foliage sort of defines a line across it i'm going to use this mix of blended flock turf flirt and clump foliage and lichen yeah there's a vid on that in the watch the foliage playlist on mixing all this sort of stuff up and making turf mixes yeah but i'm going to get this i'm going to basically just come along and i'm just going to sprinkle it in places and just shove it in yeah, so it's loose, and then when I seal it, yeah, that'll all get held down, but it'll help break up this sort of harsh line, okay? It's what I did on the other pieces anyway, but since I've extended the border, I need to re-put that bit in as well. So I'm going to do that, get these all sealed up, and at the same time, I'm going to get my, uh, wherever that's gone, the Sarissa Precision, what you call it, uh, hut. I've got a live show tonight, so I'm going to be putting that together on the live show while these drip dry. Yeah, so hopefully we'll start basing that and that sort of stuff this episode as well. Rather chuffed. Right, cracking on time. See you shortly. So that's all my terrain pieces nice and sealed and if you take a quick note, yeah, that's what they're looking like. Now they're rather white at the minute, that's perfectly normal, yeah, all that's happened is the water's gone off, it's left the PVA which brightens everything up. Once the PVA dries that'll be all nice and if I get one of the earlier pieces, yeah, this looked exactly the same about half an hour ago. You can still see a little remnants of it just about there, where I flooded it a bit. That will dry nice and clear. So I've got no worries on that. All my clumps sealed. I've added those little bits of gribbly bits and it's looking rather nice. I am liking them. But while they dry, I've got a uh, Thursday show to do. And I've got to do something. So, sit. they will tackle this Sarissa Precision Kit. So my idea is, I'm going to put this together, see if I can figure out a base for it. Because remember, this is a test piece for figuring out the earth at the front of the, the pieces. So, that's the plan with that one. So, I'll see you after I've got this together, guys. Now that's them all bulked up and all sealed up. And I'm re just ready to muddy them up as well. So, if I very quickly, look at that. Oh, that's coming on. That is so much better. Yeah, I brought this line much further down. It's all sealed, but it's nice and hard and everything. Bit of watered down PVA, a little bit of flow aid. Yeah, just think, did I use a syringe? Yeah, I think I used a syringe on this one. I'm in the middle of Kickstarter week. I am all over the place, guys, trust me. This was supposed to be like a little break project, you know, a little thing to dabble in whilst, you know, do my editing and catching up and catching up on Kickstarter admin. War a week. Anyway, back to the terrain, eh? Because <laughs> I want to get back to the terrain. <laughs> Not in a bad way, it's just been a lot of computer work. Yeah, and Mel, Mel's been missing his, his greenery. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to it. So, yeah, all sealed up, all bulked up and looking a lot better. Now my next job is that idea of mudding it down. Now I'm going to be using my standard base brown. Yeah, I'm going to be putting it through an airbrush and yeah, that's the effect we're looking to get yeah so this muddy sort of effect just at the edge just blend in all this edge along here 
yeah on all the pieces that are on here at the minute which is the remaining pieces so it will be done across all of mine so once we've done this and it's dry i should be able to lay out what's starting to look like the final jungle and then when we do that let's have a chat about where we go from there now before we go from there i was doing a live show i was partnering along last week and i did some building yeah now this is the sarissa precision hut Far East uh, Japan hut, but I've started to customize it up with some barbecue skewers. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, to be truthful. Okay, it's more, I'd more wanted to do just a little piece, piece that I could have a play around with some techniques and get a feel for what I want the jungle huts to look like. To be perfectly honest, I don't know if I explained this in the earlier section of the video, so apologies if I did. <laughs> yeah, it's been a mad week. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it's from Sarissa Precision. It's one of their Japanese, what you call it, sort of jungle huts. One of the other things that I wanted to do with this was put a base on it. Yeah, so I can have a play with uh, ground textures, not jungle textures, but like walked on earth and paths and stuff like that. I have a feeling I've already told you this, but that's where we're up to on this stage. So my next job is get all these browned up and then we'll come back, have a proper look at it and decide where we're going from there, guys. Right, cracking on time. So the spraying's all done and they are looking gorgeous. Come take a look at this. Here you go. Yeah. Now, what I did was, yeah, I didn't just blend the edge in with that brown, which has come out beautiful, absolutely beautiful, yeah. I also gave the general piece a quick overblast, and that's had a couple of effects. One, it, it's generally knocked all the greens and that sort of stuff well back, okay. Take a look at this comparison photo. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, really knocked them back and, and blended them all into the base. Okay, the other thing that it's done is because paint has a matting agent in it, you know, it's not gloss, when it's hit the plastic plants, it's taken the shine off them. Now, I was planning on doing that with a matte varnish, but I was a little bit concerned about cracking and that sort of stuff. I don't think I'm going to need to worry about it now, to be perfectly honest. Now, there was one piece that on the live stream, because I did it on the live stream, I got carried away with and I didn't, do what you call the general overspray, okay? So, I've done all the overspray on this. I, here, let me show you. Yeah, and if I bring this in, I put that there, and we put that one there. Yeah, you should be able to see the difference, yeah, between how this is a bit more muted and brown and how these greens and stuff are much stronger. On the live show what I did is I came in and I got a bit, I, I wasn't focused and I just focused on doing the watch call it, doing around the rim and I didn't do over the plants and there's a marked difference. Yeah, so I'll have to knit back and I'll have to give that one a quick blast. Which is actually alright because, let me explain, okay. I've taken all my terrain now that I've built for my Burma board to a standard that actually I'm quite happy with it. Do you know what I mean? It's sealed. I mean, it's not completely sealed, but all the all the clump foliage and all that sort of stuff, all the groundwork is sealed. Everything's glued on. Yeah, it's weathered to a point that I'm actually quite happy with it. I could go in with some different inks and stuff like that and do some fancy stuff, but there's quite a bit of time invested in that. And I don't need to right now because it looks beautiful, with the exception of that one bit. So, that's the terrain done. Just, just a minute then. Let me just check. Yeah. How long have we been doing this project? I mean, I started this, this board what? When did I start it? We were filming in the kitchen when we turned half the kitchen into a film studio of the early days. Uh, so that was around about, that was before I was here. So this project's got to be coming on three years old, but I finally finished the terrain. Now, I was thinking, yeah, just a little side project. 
me and Corb, we've been getting back into playing ball action, you know, and watch her getting back into it. And it's been a spur for getting the terrain done. I've been really enjoying it, rolling some dice. But obviously, I haven't got a watch clip, a terrain map for it. Now, I have got these sort of plans, yeah, to make my own custom battle map. First, a neoprene one. Yeah, because that's the quickest and easiest way to do it. Then a corking one that I can roll out. That's a bit fancier. And then I want to step up to the full modular boards. Yeah, but it's taken me three years to get to this point. So I figured start with a battle mat rather than the boards. Yeah, because otherwise you're never going to have a gaming table. Or you, your kid will have kids of his own before you can roll on your own gaming table, Bosco. So, yeah, I was thinking about the battle mat. And then we had a, a, a chat on the uh, Sunday nighter where the conversation of, can you spray or dye, what you call it, acrylic, uh, neoprene mats? And we've been playing on this. In fact, tell you what, let me get it set up. Let me move this one. So, I've got the battle mat out that we've been using. Now, this is, what you call it? I think this is the wasteland mat from Deep Cut. Okay, Deep Cut Studios. And we've been using it for our jungle board because most of, the, most of the mats have got a green, obviously. And this is the closest one to the browns, but it's a bit light, as you can tell. Now, there are darker areas over here and there's a darker area over just a, off camera there. Okay, but it's a little bit light. And so what I'm wondering is, and this came up on the live show, can you put paint on these? Now it's neoprene and I think they're covered in a protective coating which technically makes them wipe off. You know what I mean? So I don't know. But if I can get a layer of paint on it and as long as, you know, I look after it, it should be okay or it should at least do me in the meantime. So does what you call it, acrylic uh, house paint spray onto neoprene battle mats? That's the question. I don't know. Should we find out? Let's crack on. So that turned out a lot better than I expected. I was just using my standard paint, that I, brown paint that I was using for my jungle pieces. Yeah, sprayed it on, went in really thick, thin, and it came as like a bit of a filter. Now it isn't quite dry, but it's quite there. I mean, I'm not seeing any cracking problems. It's knocked it down. You can feel it a little bit on it. You can still feel it a little bit damp. You can still feel a little bit of a texture, powder texture. It's not smooth like neoprene, yeah? But it isn't coming off. I can't see any reactions to the neoprene, yeah, from putting. But then again, it's just acrylic paint. So acrylic paint, a bit of water and a bit of flow aid. So there shouldn't be any reactions. It's darkened it down quite considerably, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I like the way it's gone in like a filter. So all the detail is still there, all the rock detail that they've put on it. Yeah, because that works actually well for the jungle as well. Now it's actually got the filter on. But it is considerably, yeah, a lot darker. And it's also moved over into the colour tone I've been using for all my bases. So, uh, if we have a quick round here. Grab one of them. Oh, jungle down. Yeah. That. That is much better, much better. Bring it there for you. Yeah, I like that a lot. Pasta still a little bit lighter, the, the mat, but it's nowhere near as bright. It's in the right color tone. And I think I'm on a winner. What a way to wrap up a Burma build. I've got a battle mat. I've got all my, what you call it? All my, my bits painted. I can't lay this out properly until it's fully dry for obvious reasons and that poses a bit of a problem to be perfectly honest because I'm not in the studio after this because I'm flying to Adepticon for the Kickstarter so if you want to see how this looks laid out as a table you're going to have to wait until I get back sorry guys but I suppose we could do a gameplay video on it or something like that couldn't we Oh, I'm so chuffed with how this has turned out. I mean, assuming what you call it, it dries while I'm away, yeah, without any issues, and I think it will, 
Th this means our green mats, we can put mud on them and we can do all sorts of things now. I've got a couple more mats, I'm gonna have a play with those. No one nick this for a tutorial in the meantime, yeah? If you see this as someone else does in a tutorial since this vid goes up and I get back from Adepticon, you tell them. <sighs> Should have saved it for a tutorial. Never mind, I've done it, that's the main thing. My terrain's done. I'm gonna be gaming and it's gonna be looking beautiful. Really beautiful. All right, right, let's wrap this up. Okay, uh, more Burma build definitely coming for you because we're onto the stage where I need to start tackling buildings and huts and all that sort of stuff. And it's getting interesting, but it's getting big and it's getting beautiful. <sighs> right, guys, uh, I'll wrap this up. Remember, as always, if you like it, like it, share it, share it. If you've got any comments down below in the comments, I normally say, if you like these videos, support me on Patreon, but if you really like what I do here, jump on the Kickstarter if it's still going. If not, jump on Patreon or PayPal, links down below. And in the meantime, guys, Mel's a happy boy. Just gutted that I'm not gonna get to play on it. <sighs> Always the way, innit? Right, I'll catch you soon. All the best, yeah? Ta-da.